Uh, thanks for everyone for being here. Glad that we have a little moment of uh, kind of not rain. Um, so dirt bikes and ATVs are a problem that we all know we've been seeing in New Haven for quite some time. Impacts a lot of other cities as well with people illegally riding dirt bikes and ATVs in large groups around cities. But it's not just in Connecticut, it's across the entire East Coast. And it's something that many, many cities are struggling to handle. We have a policy in New Haven where we do not chase and engage in active pursuit for the safety of people in the community and the dirt bike and ATV riders. There's been incidents in the past where when we get engaged in pursuit, uh, people got severe, severely, severely hurt. Uh, so we've been working on creative ways to address this problem. And to put this in a little larger context, last summer I think was a very difficult summer for the city. Among all the other issues that we saw, we saw an uptick in dirt bike and ATV riding, but also an uptick in drag racing and large groups congregating. We had uh, an event where many, many 10,000 10, motorcycles came into the city. So there's a lot of uh, disregard for the rules and the law that we're trying to handle in a way that um, is effective, given the limited resources we have. And today we're uh, working to uh, initiate uh, based on the ordinance that was passed last year by the Board of Alders, uh, a outreach and uh, notifying a lot of the gas stations about the new ordinance. Uh, Chief Dominguez is going to go through the details of the ordinance. There's a couple of parts of it. One is fining the individuals that will ride ATV and dirt bikes. The other is fining gas stations who serve gas to individuals riding dirt bikes and ATVs. We'll also be doing increased enforcement and working on those other issues that I talked about, drag racing uh, and other large congregations that should not be occurring in the city. Um, and so I'll, I'll turn it over to Chief Dominguez, but before I do, I wanted to say that I'm thankful that the Board of Alders was very supportive of this initiative and worked with my administration to get it right. I'm also thankful for the work that the police department is doing with very limited resources to address many, many challenges that we have in the city. I'm gonna hand it over to Chief Dominguez. Good morning, everybody. So we're very excited that we're able to have this ordinance in, in, in place and be able to utilize it just for a different way um, to be able to enforce uh, dirt bikes on the city streets without endangering the dirt bike riders and or other people who are, who are on the road. So the ordinance has three parts, potentially four. So one of them is to find the operator of the dirt bike if they're on a city street if they're on a sidewalk if they're on public property like in a park or if they're on private property and they don't have permission from the owner specifically we're able to find the operator of the vehicle if they're of the uh the dirt bike the, it's it's called the motorized recreational vehicle is what the ordinance is called additionally we can find the passenger on the vehicle if they're over 16 and we can also um the other two parts are what we we're doing today is the gas station. So the gas stations have to post signs that say that you cannot fuel up motorized recreational vehicles. If they don't post the signs, that is a fine. And additionally, if they allow the people, the operators to be able to get gas, the first offense is a warning and any offense after that is also a fine. And then the ordinance takes it one step further where any dealership in New Haven has to post signage that you cannot ride these vehicles on the city streets and it has to post the ordinance um, with the rules of what you can how you can and where you can ride uh, these vehicles what's we've been doing lineup trainings we've been training our officers the district manager and our and I and uh, ISU detect, uh, sergeant Warner have been going out to all of the gas stations in the city, there's approximately 50 gas stations and giving the signs and, and alerting the gas stations of the new ordinance so that no one is surprised once we start enforcing. And we're hoping to start enforcing slowly this weekend, um, specifically in the gas stations and making them aware, giving that warning. So as the weather gets warmer and, and more uh, ATVs are on the street, we'll be able to, to uh, in, enforce further. Um, a good story that this ordinance training has just um, been rolled out by the Detective Bureau 2 Patrol with, with everything that they would need to know. And last night we issued the first um, infraction for the ordinance. There was a, 
two individuals were on an ATV on the sidewalk. It crashed. Um, they were actually being um, monitored by their father. It was two 15-year-olds. And we were able to enforce on the, the parent for allowing the operation on the sidewalk and the, uh, we were able to tow the ATV. That is the other piece. The ordinance gives us the ability to tow the vehicle to our police garage for further um, processing. Can you talk about the dollar amount? <laughs> yes, so um, first offense for an operator um, is $1,000. Second offense is $1,500. And the third and subsequent offense are $3,000 fines. Um, a passenger over 16 is a $250 fine. And then the dealers, if they don't post the ordinance, first it's a written warning and then it's a $100 fine. And the same goes for the sale of gasoline. Um, if it's not posted for, or they allow them to fill up, it's a written warning and then it's a $100 fine. Are there any designated places in the city where these recreational vehicles can be ridden? Now. You know, this is something that often comes up as if we only gave people a place to ride, then we wouldn't have these issues. And I, I think there's two problems with that. Uh, first of all, the police department in the past in Fairhaven, a uh, district manager years ago, really worked hard to actually drive kids that were from New Haven to sites out of town. And there just wasn't the interest. I think some of the draw is the fact that people can do this illegally around the city. Second, many of the people that do this are from out of town. They come here because they can violate the law and they know that this is a place they can do that. So, you know, when, when, when oftentimes when the police department catches people, we find out that, that many, if not most of the people that they catch are out of towners that are coming oftentimes from far away. The third issue is we're a small city and I, I think I can pretty safely say that no neighborhood is going to want a, a, an ATV or dirt bike track near their home because it'll be noisy and disruptive. And so while I appreciate the spirit of trying to resolve the problem in a way that um, makes everyone happy, I think it's unrealistic. Our goal is to just get people to follow the rules. We don't want to find people. We don't want to arrest people. And part of this is actually to reduce the number of arrests to give us the ability to fine, and if people don't pay the fine, then we can keep the bike or we keep the ATV and get it off the street. Um, our goal is to get people to follow the rules. I did want to give uh, Frank an opportunity, just as a community member, Frank is, and Stephanie are very involved in the Friends of Edward Park here, to talk about the impact the dirt bikes and ATVs have on the park. So Frank. Okay, um, my name is Frank Cochran. I work with the uh, Edgewood Park Green Team. We do a lot of planting, and we do a lot of trail maintenance and a lot of general maintenance in the park and have done that for many years. Uh, the two issues I can speak to from personal experience are there have been times when a large number or even a small number of these guys have come into the park and ridden around it at a high rate of speed and uh, provided you know, danger both to themselves and more specifically, uh, th uh, there was a time when they were doing this right around the children's playground, which is at the other end of the park. And uh, I do remember talking to one of them one time and saying, hey, look, there are kids playing over here. You got to just stay away from this. And actually they did for a while. I don't know what's happened more recently. Mostly what we see is they find a grassy area. They don't stay on the, on the uh, paved surface at all. They're not interested in that. They want to go on the grassy areas, and there are several places you could actually see right now where what they've done is churn up the grass. And it, what it does is it destroys the park for the purposes that the people who are entitled to use it are using it, scares pedestrians and dog walkers and it tears it up physically. Um, so, you know, we really want to keep them out of the park. Um, in the usual way, as the gentleman said to me yesterday, C-O-C-H-R-A-N. Any questions about it?
specific areas, commercial uh, lots, schools, and some of these uh, spiders gathering before they take off that we're going to be kind of taking a, a, a bigger look at? Yeah, so um, that does happen. Um, we try to find out that that's happening and get there ahead of time so we can identify riders. If riders do drive off, we try to get body camera footage or other footage of them so we can present the violation later and take the bike at a later time. That'll be a aspect of this. So yes, we do, do try to do that. How do you identify a rider? I mean, they're going fast. How do you identify who's on the vehicle or riding? Well, that's a good question, but they also tape themselves and put it on social media. So whatever way, we'll, we'll, we'll try to identify them. But like the mayor said, a large percentage of these riders are from out of town. So sometimes we're not able to identify them. Um, a few years back, we were able to find a U-Haul with a whole bunch of gas in it, and we seized the U-Haul, and it kind of slowed them down. So we're going to use all those type of techni techniques, A, to keep our officers safe, B, to keep the community safe, but also to keep the riders safe. This is very dangerous for them when we're trying to stop them. So um, this allows us more tools in the tool bag. The biggest thing, like the chief mentioned, is seizing the bikes. In the past, you had to seize the bike through a court process. Now it's a city process. It's a quicker process, which is good for the people who get their bikes seized, but also the city, um, and especially for the officers. It's a much uh, less complicated pr procedure. So not only are you getting a $1,000 fine, we're taking your bike too. Um, and it's about, like the mayor said, changing behavior. We don't want to arrest people. We don't want to give $1,000 fines. We just don't want you riding on the street and unsafe. So this is a way to change behavior, maybe limit the number of arrests. But I will say, if you're riding and you could still be arrested, you know, you could still be arrested, especially if you, uh, uh, you know, do something more than just riding on the street, you could definitely still be arrested. So that needs to be clear as well. But... This is an alternative to arrest. A thousand dollar fine, you lose your bike. Hey, maybe I'm not going to go back to New Haven next time. And that's a behavior changer, and that's what we're trying to do. It's all court-based arrest type laws. Um, I don't think we had. You could also get get a citation as well, but not as high of a citation. And we were unable to seize the bikes in this manner. We'd have to go through court. The court process is extremely difficult. It's called an in-rem process. We, at one time, we had to assign an officer just to that. And we don't have the resources to do that. This situation that we've created with um, Pat King from Corporation Council and the Alders, this is a good situation. It's a better situation, I think. How long has this been in the work for? Uh, well, we were looking at this type of thing. Uh, New London had a similar ordinance and they were able to give out minimal tickets and stop the riding. Um, so we were looking at that probably 2018, but the mayor really pushed it when he came into office. What about drones? Can't you find who people are by just getting them on drone footage? I, I, I don't. So we currently don't uh, use drones uh, in the city, so other agencies do, and that's obviously an option. But for us, we're these are the tools that we are currently using. We really think it's going to be successful, and um, we hope to have a follow-up meeting as to kind of what, we, what we've been seeing and how we've been able to change behavior and how, we've, how the community feels, what the impact, how they're seeing the impact of this ordinance be used. So did you get any pushback whatsoever from like the gas station owner in terms of saying, hey, I'm missing out on money here? We, a, a little bit. A little bit. Um, nobody wants to have their what they normally are allowed to do. So now, now you can't take someone coming and, and filling up. So... But I think overall, once, the, once there's a better understanding and the big picture is explained and, and we, can, we can talk further with these owners, as them being, if, if we limit the ability to get the gas, they're unable to ride the vehicle. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to stop it in different areas where it's not criminal, where it's not police involvement for us trying to arrest. So there's a procedure in the ordinance that there'll be a hearing with a hearing officer in the city. So say um, someone takes your ATV and you're unaware of it, you'll be able to have a, a, a legal hearing in front of the city and possibly get it back. Um, but the ones that we do keep, um, we're actually go still going through the process. The ordinance mentions auctioning them off. It mentions some other things, but um, we haven't, you know, we're going to see where that takes us. So. 
Anything else? Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you.